Hi everyone, Raul Jimenez here with the Schrader Group. I'm blessed to be with Phil Delgado, one of the top 10 goosehead insurance agencies in the nation. So how, how do we get there? Boy, top 10 in America. You know what, Raul, number one, a lot of hard work. Mm -hmm. And then number two, a tremendous emphasis on adding value. Value. Value to clients, our people we insure, their home and cars, and most importantly to our business partners, folks who trust us with their clients. So we've got to really thank our realtors and lenders. And you do home and auto? That's right. Home, auto, boats and toys, what they call personal lines, property and casualty insurance. Mm. So as one of the top 10 referral-based insurance agencies in the United States, we obviously do a lot of business, which means in the first quarter of 2024, we sold over a million dollars of home and auto insurance. Wow. Row, all that means is that we're experienced. One of the biggest questions I get in the field is, how do I lower my insurance? And what, what are the routes to go? Whether it's home, auto, do we bundle? I mean, what, what is your take on that? The cost of insurance has never been higher. Number one, if you want to lower your insurance cost, you have to fix and improve your credit score, mm -hmm. okay? So how do we do that? We wanna pay, and the biggest mistake I see after doing this for nearly a decade is folks who are filing claims that are low in payout. So as a licensed insurance agent, I consult my clients to not file a claim if the payout is gonna be a small amount, and the amount I use is $1,500. If we're gonna net $1,500 for filing a claim, right and your insurance is gonna go up $300 a, month, uh, a year for the next five years, yeah. mm -hmm. there's no gain. Right. So let's say, for example, someone has a home, a home insurance policy with a $3,500 deductible. They have a water claim, and the total amount of damage is $5,000. Mm -hmm. Well, after that $3,500 deductible, they're gonna net $1,500. I would absolutely recommend that if it was me, I would not file that claim. So I'm not saying don't file claims unless they're over $1,500. I'm saying if the payout is, is less than $1,500, don't pay the claim. On the auto side, if it's an at-fault accident, absolutely pay it out of pocket. Yeah. Now, if it's someone else's fault, uh, an, uh, a not-at-fault accident is not going to hurt you as much as an at-fault. So, so the biggest part is shopping with a professional agent, right? But number two, resources. How do we figure out what agents or what insurance agencies have the most resources for our clients? So if we fixed our credit, we didn't file any claims, now what? We need to connect ourselves with a professional insurance agent who has resources. So what those resources look like, I'll give you an example in our agency because Goosehead is uh, statewide, we insure the most homes and cars through the independent channel in the state of Texas. I have data. Right. So I can log into my data and at any given time I can find out county by county which carrier, because I'm a broker, I have over 30 carriers, I can find out which carrier throughout the whole company is selling the most policies county by county. Mm -hmm. So if someone's having a challenging time placing a particular home and we don't know which carrier is gonna be the best, then we can use a large sample size to find out which insurance companies to start, to, to start looking mm -hmm. at. So first and foremost, Phil handles all my portfolio. I think my cars and, and my houses and rent properties and whatnot. But for the average home, what, what is a, someone that's just purchased looking to put down for insurance on a typical home? That's a great question because insurance costs have never been higher. So folks don't know like how much is too much? How much should I be paying? Mm -hmm. So again, going back to the data, a quality insurance policy in Bear County should cost about $2,200. Austin, Texas, $2,600. Houston, Dallas-Fort Worth area, $3,600. Now here's what's important. Going back to the cost of insurance and the factors determining the cost. Credit, claims history, age of home also plays a factor. Newer plumbing, newer electrical, uh, newer mechanical systems, less likely to break down. My point is, if we're talking a new construction home or a home that is one or two years old, it will save you $1,000 off of these average prices that I just mentioned. You guys at the Schrader Group know about oh, new, yeah. new home sales. 100%. 100%. Absolutely. So, so you talk about all those different rates, uh, but if we look back about the last 12 months, we've been seeing that some people are getting sticker shocked by you know the rates going up or whatnot. What, what, what is behind all that? So why is the insurance industry and marketplace in the current state that it mm -hmm. is? So several reasons. What you see on media, and I'll just quickly repeat it, is the amount of catastrophic losses, weather-related catastrophes 
globally in 2023 mm -hmm. exceeded $50 billion. Wow. Insurance companies lost their tail. Then secondly, we all know about inflation, sure. the cost of materials and the cost of labor to perform repairs is up. Kind of what we haven't heard so much about is the fact that insurance carriers are kind of like banks. The government requires insurance carriers and banks to have reserve funds mm -hmm. on hand. Those funds in the insurance industry are becoming depleted. So how are they going to re re replenish those reserve accounts that insurance carriers are raising their premiums? Right. Secondly, a lot of folks don't know this. Just like we purchase insurance for our homes and right. cars, mm -hmm. insurance carriers, Travelers, Nationwide, Liberty Mutual, Progressive, Farmers, Allstate, all companies that I'm licensed and appointed with, they also purchase insurance to cover catastrophic large-scale losses for themselves as well. And the cost of reinsurance has increased tremendously. Really? So so I guess we should just get back to the basics then, right? So number one, how is insurance sold? And number two, what's the best way to shop for insurance? So insurance is sold in two ways traditionally. One is what we call the captive market, captive agents. A captive agent means that they sell only one label, one logo. You know my dad, my dad's been yeah. an insurance agent for over 40 years with right. State Farm. Mm -hmm. Great company, he has one option to sell and one option to offer. Now the second option, such as myself, I'm an insurance broker, broker. also known as an independent insurance agent. So I'm licensed and appointed with dozens of insurance carriers. Mm -hmm. I'm not a middleman, I'm literally an agent with over 30 different insurance carriers, so I'm able to shop the entire market. Okay, so that might lead into my next question. We live in a world where we want things now, 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 now. A lot of people go online to shop for things. Do you recommend that, or is it actually getting somebody on the phone and kind of walking it through and talking about what the best options are? That's a great question, and you're right. It's all about online, shopping online. So I do not recommend consumers shop for insurance online. There's two reasons, two main reasons. Number one, there's nobody to hold accountable. You don't know where this person is that is selling you your insurance policy. So there's no accountability. Whose door are you going to knock on if mm -hmm. you didn't get the coverage that you were promised? If you're not getting the claim service that you promised, there's no accountability. Mm -hmm. Of course, is, as you know, Raul, 95% of our business comes from referrals right. from realtors, mortgage lenders. So there's a tremendous amount of accountability. Sure. I've got to take care of my clients or you're not going to send me any more uh, of your value Absolutely, clients. Right. Now, the other reason we have to be cautious about shopping for insurance online is that there's a likelihood that your information will be sold and you'll be telemarketed and remarketed for months and months to come. What, what do consumers need to watch out for out there? And, and, and when it comes to renewing your insurance policy and all that kind of stuff, what, what are the biggest factors that you would say, based on your tenure in the industry, would be the, the key points? So the biggest thing consumers need to watch out for right now in this marketplace, this challenging marketplace for insurance is fine print, okay? Fine print means coverage changes at renewal, deductible changes. Fine print in your renewal at the bottom saying your wind and hail deductible is being changed from 1% to 3%. Your roof is no longer be, gonna be covered at replacement cost, but on a payment schedule. Well, a payment schedule doesn't sound too bad mm -hmm. until you realize it means that your roof is now covered at, on a depreciated scale. Okay, they're gonna pay you pennies on the dollar for your roof. Whereas before, when you bought your policy, it was covered at replacement cost. Sure. If you guys like what you're hearing, but you want more and you want more information on home auto insurance, you can go to my YouTube channel at delgado.agency slash YouTube. You can call our office at 210-899-3800. We'd be glad to serve you. Uh, looking forward to the opportunity to put you in the best hands possible at Goosehead Insurance, the Phil Delgado Agency. Well, there you have it. Thank you, Phil Delgado. And if you have any more questions, please feel free to reach out. If not, y'all have a blessed day and we'll talk to y'all soon.